With us now is Professor Mel Rosenberg, a lecturer at Tel Aviv University and the founder of the university course, Music of the 60s. Uh, professor, thank you so much for, for being with me. I want to ask about John Lennon's enduring legacy to this day, 40 years since he was murdered. Why do so many, even young musicians, the younger generations, why do they still find so much inspiration in his music? Oh, I give a whole course on that. Um, well, we have I a few minutes. That, uh, the Cliff's Notes <laughs> version, as they say. Okay. Um, well, the uh, the Beatles changed popular music forever. A lot of songs that we hear on the radio today, uh, young people say to me in my course, wow, that sounds like Beatles songs. And, uh, you know, my grandchildren are now growing up on Beatles songs, and they love it. Uh, there is something uh, in their music that transcends uh, logic, that transcends science. Uh, they had everything. Uh, voices, music, cheekiness, irreverence, uh, wonderful uh, melodies. And uh, they came to life at a time when the world needed that kind of music. And professor, tell me more about John Lennon's uh, personal growth as an artist, I mean, from the the earliest days of the Beatles uh, to his more transcendental meditative music and exploration of, of East Asian medicine and music uh, to his kind of uh, the last album he released. Tell us more about that that journey. Okay, I, I'm I'm going to have to focus on the most important years, perhaps not for Lennon but for the world, and this is what I call his the years of his positive rivalry. First of all, John Lennon started out, you, you say artist, but he started out as an artist, right? Uh, writing humor and then drawing. Um, and uh, with a guitar that was purchased for him at the age of 15 or 16, he began to play uh, skiffle music. Uh, and then he had a seminal meeting with Paul McCartney uh, and uh, subsequently um, the rest of the Beatles. And that that changed everything, changed everything for John. Um, and I think that... Um, you know, when people are gone, uh, we can look back on their history. Uh, he might not be happy with what I'm going to say, but I think that the years that he spent in this positive rivalry with Paul McCartney, uh, each of them helping each other, complementing each other, uh, each one trying to outright the other, and then the harmonies that they developed and the band that they developed that conquered the world. Uh, I think that this is his for me, his most important legacy. Uh, without uh, John, the Beatles would have been a cute uh, British band. He's the one who gave them this cheeky irreverence. And um, I always tell people that George, uh, Sir George Martin, uh, he, um, he took the Beatles on because of their chutzpah, because yeah. of their irreverence, their cheekiness. And John, he was the one with the edge. Oh, really? He was the one that told, that told the... the, the the um, the people in the audience that had money to to jingle their jewelry. <laughs> really well said. A really important remembrance here. Uh, we're almost out of time, uh, but Professor, want to put you on the spot. This is an enduring uh, uh, debate rages to this day. Who had the better voice? Do you think it's it, it goes back and forth, John or Paul? Okay, so in the course I teach that it's not the quality of the voice; it's the integrity of the voice. Uh, people listening to music, they want uh, to believe in the personality of the person who is telling them the story. So McCartney had a nicer voice, but John Lennon perhaps had the more authentic voice. All right. Professor, thank you so much for being with us again. A really fascinating course at Tel Aviv University. I really appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.